Greetings, folks. Uh, my name is Kitty Farnham, and uh, welcome to the webinar for the Alaska Salmon Fellows. We're going to get started in about one or two minutes. Um, and I just wanted to let you know we are recording this webinar so that those who are unable to join us today in person can, can watch at a later time. Um, most of you folks are going to be on mute during this, but there's a uh, um, there's an opportunity to ask questions and we'll um, utilize chat uh, as well as um, as well as there's a hand raising option in the zoom technology that can let us know you want to speak and we can unmute you so um, as I said um, and if somebody Matthew did a few minutes ago can respond by text confirming that you can hear us okay And for most of the chats that you enter, um, please send them to everyone so yeah. we all see all of your questions. And if we don't get a huge audience, I will unmute. Uh, we didn't know if we were going to get 10, 50, or 100. Um, and we didn't want to limit it, so um, we'll if it's not a huge audience, we'll unmute those phones, microphones, so we can interact with that as well. Great. Well, while you guys are, um, we're, we're going to give it another half minute. Um, if you're able to use the chat box, uh, for those of you on computers, go ahead and introduce yourself to one another. Uh, and maybe share what your connection is to salmon. We're interested in stories here at the Humanities Forum. So that's a nice way to warm it up and get your voices in the room. And uh, so we appreciate that. Start. We should go ahead and go in. Okay, let's start. All right. Well, I'm going to turn it over to the fearless leader here. Um, do you want to um, the end introductions? Do you want to just have them type those in and just have them roll? Yeah, they'll they'll roll as we start talking, and I hope people do interact with the chat at the same time as well. Okay. <laughs> well, hi everyone. Welcome. My name is Cameron Perez Verdia. I am the president and CEO of the Alaska Humanities Forum. And it's a pleasure to talk with you today. Um, I'm just going to do a, a brief introduction of uh, myself and the Alaska Humanities Forum and set some context for the conversation that is coming today. Um, so as I said, my name is Cameron. Um, I'm originally from Barrow. I have um, worked in the nonprofit world for um, um, a little over 20 years and, and done lots of different kinds of work. Uh, this is by far my favorite. And um, I'm new to the forum. I've only been here about 10 months. Uh, but it's really an amazing organization, an amazing team that I get to work with. Um, so the Alaska Humanities Forum, uh, a little bit of history, it's, uh, it's been around for more than 40 years. It is um, one of the state councils, so the, Alaska, so the National Endowment for the Humanities, uh, based out of Washington, D.C., has uh, councils in each one of the states and territories, and their role is really to engage with community and to represent the public humanities. Um, I, was, I was saying this earlier that um, that word often trips people up, humanities, because we often think of it as being purely academic or research-based. But when we use the word humanities here at the last humanities forum, we're really talking about the stories of all of our lives. Um, the stories of those that have come before us, those of us that are around now and telling our important stories, and those stories really tell us about who we were, and who we are, and in many ways, who we want to be. Um, so our mission here at the Alaska Humanities Forum is really to connect Alaskans. And we connect Alaskans through stories and ideas and experiences in order to strengthen our, our, our communities and empower people. Um, and so this program that you're about to hear more about is really a wonderful example of how we're going to bring uh, leaders and advocates and thinkers and together uh, to really um, change a system 
that, um, that is so important to all of us here in Alaska. So uh, just a few more things. Um, so we, uh, we connect Alaskans in lots of different ways. I'll just give you a few examples. We have lots of education and youth programs. We do programs with rural and urban youth where we do exchanges, where youth are understanding more about themselves, their culture, building resiliency, and really helping them to uh, be, be ready to go out into the world and do great things. Uh, we work with educators. Um, one of our programs really focuses on new teachers coming into Alaska, specifically rural communities. We have them go to culture camps and really immerse them in the culture um, and an environment in which they're going to live and teach. And that program, um, like others, is really um, successful in having teachers stay longer in those, those communities and, and better meet the needs of kids. Another example of, of some work that we, we do is we do a lot of public forums. Um, we have one called Second Friday where we bring artists and historians and storytellers in and we bring the, the community in to have conversations around important topics of our, our day. Um, some recent examples have been, um, we had a conversation recently about um, the LGBTQ uh, Alaska Native community. We have conversations on uh, difficult topics like sex trafficking. We've had conversations about um, the relationship that we all have to place and how important that that is to all of us. So these are opportunities for the community to come in and really talk about things that are very important to them. And through that work, again, we believe that we're strengthening our communities and making Alaska a better place. Another area, which is, which is where we're gonna to go today, is around leadership. And we have a program called Leadership Anchorage, which is in its 20th year, and Kitty also is involved in that, that work. Um, and that is really about bringing emerging and existing leaders from diverse backgrounds and diverse industries together to um, build stronger networks and improve their leadership skills and really connect them to what it means to be Alaskans and our values. And so we are sending leaders out into the world that are really prepared to lead with intention and connection. Um, and so that leads us to the program today, the Alaska Salmon Fellows, and we couldn't be more proud to be the lead agency among many partners who are leading this effort. Um, the, the funding primarily comes from, from the Moore Foundation, and we're really grateful for that. Um, and we have a number of partners that are working with us. Um, let me just name a few. Um, the, the Center for the Center for, for Salmon and Society um, it is a partner out of the university. Um, First Alaskans Institute, which will be, uh, which is not only a partner, but also will be doing some work with us in some of the, the, the convenings. Nautilus Impact Investing and the Salmon Project. Um, we also have an advisory council, which uh, Kitty will tell you more about. Um, more uh, leaders and thinkers who have joined us to really make this, this program great. Um, so with that, um, uh, it's really a pleasure to uh, speak with you today, and I'll be in more of the conversation later on and be able to answer questions. So I'll make me hand it over to you. Great. Well, thanks, Cameron. Um, and uh, on the leadership programs team here at the forum, um, we're delighted to have a really great team. The whole forum uh, group of folks are all part of this at many ways, but myself uh, and Rayette Sterling, who's online and monitoring the chats for us, and Jennifer Howell, who's on her way over uh, uh, from the Forum on the Environment. She's been up on the hill. Uh, oh, she just arrived. Uh, so that's our team here and the fellows will get to know us and we'll get to know you over the course of 18 months. Um, one more bit of technology update. Some of you I know are logged in by phone only and we wanna still be able to hear uh, and respond to your questions. So I'm gonna give you a phone number and I'm gonna pause for 20 seconds while you grab paper and pen. You can text it on this phone number your question and then we'll be able to respond to it so um, you can send questions in at any time and we'll answer questions towards the end um, that phone number for texting questions is 509-599-5897 I wrote it down so again uh, yeah. Except that the people on the phone can't see each other. Oh, chat. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so again, the phone number for those on the phone, 509-599-5897.
5897 to text a question. And all the rest of you guys, um, please do share questions on chat and you can start throwing the questions out before we start talking um, because um, one person's question might stream to another. So uh, what I wanted to do next is really just provide an overview um, of the Alaska Salmon Fellows Program, building on what uh, Cameron did offer as a foundation. As he said, you know, we, we convene people and we promote dialogues. Um, and we believe that by, um, the, uh, in this case, instead of a dialogue about a piece of art or history, it's a dialogue about salmon. And by bringing different perspectives together, we can shape the future of Alaska by investing in the people and the salmon and really look at that as a symbiotic system. So uh, let me just give an overview, if I may. Uh, hopefully everyone online has found out about the webinar uh, and had a chance to look at our website. That's really your best resource and there is a mailing list there. We'll be sending little bits of additional information. Um, but I'm going to stay at a high level today uh, to start with. These are the things that are really well known, if you will, the sort of the, the, the clear architecture, the bones of the program. Um, as you'll discover in the questions and answers, there are things that we don't yet know, and that's partly by design. We want the program to uh, shape and unfold in a way that is very reflective of the fellows that are selected and what they discover together. So uh, you may hear me saying, yes, we have an answer to that, or no, that one's going to emerge. Um, that's uh, how we keep this uh, sort of um, iterative process of, of uh, evolution. The main program elements, and these are the outcomes. These are the big outcomes we're striving for. One is um, a network uh, connecting people. Uh, we want the whole program um, as a whole to have impact. Uh, well, I was going to, oh, sorry. That's sorry. okay. Um, well, there we go. So go. the five elements, a network, overarching impact, an actual recognition of, of the work fellows are already doing. Many fellows programs around the globe are recognition oriented, um, but what makes ours a little more unique is this uh, strong introduction of an impact that the fellows achieve as a group, the network they form, the learning they have. And gatherings is the convenience, the way in which we do interact uh, and grow together. So I'll say a little bit more about each one of those. Um, the, uh, the network. We anticipate selecting between 12 and 16 fellows for an 18-month journey. And uh, we will actually have two uh, opportunities to do this. Fellows, Salmon Fellows, this year are being selected by early April based on an application due date of February 28th. And they'll continue for 18 months. Uh, and about this time next year, we're gonna be recruiting a second group. Uh, those fellows together, uh, will form a new network that doesn't already exist in Alaska because a lot of times people talk more with folks in their own sector. So uh, maybe commercial fishermen talk to commercial fishermen and tribes talk with tribes and agency people talk with agency people and researchers with researchers. We want to create that environment where those voices connect in new ways. Um, so that breadth of experience and background is real crucial. And the, uh, um, and the other thing is that the fellows experience is a group experience. So you're on an individual journey as a fellow with your work and, and your commitments. And um, the experience itself will be shaped by who else is it in it with you. Um, the next big program element is that an outcome and expectation is that we have impact. That impact comes in several ways, and we're going to be watching this as it emerges um, and helping to cultivate it throughout the whole process. Individual growth, individual learning and impact, uh, what you yourself are doing, and we invest in the work you're doing. Um, as a group, your, the fellows are going to have a chance to co-create initiatives that really positively influence salmon and people in Alaska. And that will come with some grant funding and those projects uh, will unfold to um, have some impact that you choose when you craft those projects. Um, the whole of the impact is to strengthen Alaska's salmon systems and the relationship of people to it. We, we say around here sometimes, it's about salmon, but it's not about salmon. Um, we, um, the Moore Foundation really um, understands this in our advisory team. Enor enormous amount of resources uh, go into salmon work, 
um, but not that much goes into the people part of that use the information, the data that manage the systems. So this program with the Alaska Salmon Fellows is, is really a lot to do with the people and how they interact in order to utilize all that knowledge. Um, uh, recognition. Um, much like other fellows programs, we are proud of the folks that get selected for this. Um, there will be um, an actual cash award to every fellow of $10,000. And there are no real constraints on how you would invest that money. Um, it's, it's to honor and, and acknowledge what you do. It may be that you need it to help with things like child care if you're going to be gone from home or elder care. It may be that you want to um, infuse it into your work or your existing um, business or, or activities. Um, the other aspect of recognition is we, we will select fellows who have really amazing stories to tell about the work they're doing, and we want that story to have a ripple effect across Alaska. So we will be helping to highlight your story um, probably over the course of the 18 months, crafting some, some videos, some articles, both of the individual fellows' work and of the cohort. So uh, I hope to have some great recognition of the work that you do. Um, the learning. We are not professing that people will come in and become salmon experts because this is not necessarily the curriculum or the academic space for learning all there is to know about salmon. What we're really spending learning time on is discovering different perspectives. What don't I know about salmon through the lens of someone who has a different lived experience, uh, maybe uh, in a fish camp or in a cannery or at a policy legislative level, and what can I learn from that? So the learning is going to be a lot to do with the breadth of perspectives that fellows bring themselves. And we're also going to do some pretty intentional learning on building capacity as individual leaders and as a group to have an imp impact on complex systems. Um, salmon is the touchstone for this because it is such a unifying part of being Alaskan. Um, it, it affects everything, and, and if salmon are well, then so many other things are, but everything's so connected. So how do you actually shape positive action when everything's so connected? So we're going to be working on capacity to influence and lead in those spaces. And now uh, the last component is a little bit more about the structure. Um, there are um, there's, there are four gatherings total. Uh, three of them are with the cohort as a whole. Uh, we'll have some of our advisory panel, we'll have local um, leaders joining us at different times, but that's when the fellows for, four to, for about five days, and you can see the dates on the website and on our screen there, in coming up the first gathering is May 4th through 8th, um, and mm -hmm. that'll probably be in Homer, Alaska, uh, we wanted our gatherings to be in a location that's relevant to salmon. So that's more of a sport fishing destination. We'll spend one of our gatherings, maybe October will be, in a very remote rural village with a more subsistence experience of salmon. Um, in April of next year, the third gathering will try to be somewhere like um, a cannery, commercial fishing kind of a hub community. Um, and that way we're really getting different experiences and learning from the communities that we visit. Um, between the second and third gathering of the cohort, we will be preparing the fellows to actually become hosts of a wider statewide network. So uh, it's great that we're making a connection amongst ourselves, but how do we engage more Alaskans? And so we will, in conjunction with next year's Alaska Forum on the Environment, um, be sharing your work, conveying ideas about your initiatives, engaging more Alaskans, uh, about that time, we'll also be recruiting for the second round of fellows. So it's a good way to have the first year fellows really invite and infuse the second year fellows. So those are our five program elements. Um, we could share more details, but I just wanted to provide the fundamental architecture. Um, near term deadlines to be clear about February 20th is the application deadline. The link to our application is on our website. It's a fairly straightforward application. We wanted that part to be accessible. You can log in, start your draft, save it, save it. Uh, so long as you submit it by February 28th, and even if you submit it and want to change it, you can go in and reopen it. Uh, but February 28th is when applications are due, and we really do want them from a broad cross-section of Alaskans. Uh, we will then work during March 
in the review process and in early April select the fellows with the assistance of our advisory team uh, so that only a month later we can have our first gathering uh, in, in Homer. So um, the project innovative initiatives part, those will be part of our dialogue all along. In fact, it's part of the interview, the application questions, but uh, we really will be shaping them with each other. So even if you have a specific idea, um, we aren't saying that's what gets funded. We're saying that can infuse ideas that other people have and looking for initiatives that fellows can do together that they can't do alone. Um, those will take shape uh, both between the, the first and second gathering, but particularly at the second gathering, the fellows will uh, rally around, here's what we see as the high leverage opportunities in a salmon system, and particularly those opportunities that relate to this people and salmon connection. Uh, so those projects will be defined in October, uh, giving about four months to get ready to roll them out at the Forum on the Environment next year. Project Timelines are about a year. There's a bit of flexibility on that, too. So I think that that's, um, that's most of what we wanted to offer as high-level information so that we could spend uh, the bulk of our time on this webinar responding to the questions that you have. Um, I, I don't know if we've had a lot of questions posted yet on the... Uh, okay, so while we're waiting for questions, please be adding them. Um, go ahead. So, um, hi everyone, this is Cameron again, and um, I wanted to just hit a couple of pieces. We had a, um, a reception yesterday, and some wonderful questions were asked, and I wanted to just touch on a few things. This term, salmon people systems, which can be a confusing term, um, it's really something that's really important for us to unpack a bit, because because in one of the people that's involved in the creation of the, this program and will be an advisor throughout, um, Liz Medicine Crow from, from First Alaskans Institute, she said that, you know, salmon have a people problem. And if we're going to solve the salmon problem, it's going to be because we're going to change our behaviors as people. And so this is really focused on the people. And it can be confusing because we're using salmon as a theme and as a connecting idea. Um, but it's about people. And so there's a few key things. The diversity, as Kitty mentioned, is vital. That We have to have people who bring different perspectives, different experiences, who are from different locations, um, who represent different um, ways of, of li living. That's really, really important. Um, uh, the other thing I guess I would add is that, um, that this program is meant to be both uh, connecting of people and bridging of sectors and bridging of per perspectives, but it's also gonna be uncomfortable. There are gonna be, it's intended to bring people together that think differently and have different experiences. And so um, in that way, it's gonna be challenging. Uh, I'm, I would just also, also say that, um, that and, and Kitty mentioned this in, in the beginning, but I just wanna reinforce the, this point that there are elements of this project and this program that are set. Um, there are key pieces of it that, um, that are, are decided and you will know and it will be laid out in a very clear and um, way. But intentionally, a lot of it is left very open because we are not the experts. We are not the voices that really need to inform where this program and where this work goes. You are. And so we need to leave enough space so that how this unfolds is really determined by the fellows themselves. So there will be a lot of opportunity to shape and mold the direction of this entire project in many ways by who joins it. Uh, so, and that can be uncomfortable at first because you wanna go, well, well how is this gonna work? Well, some of it, it, we don't know yet because we don't have the fellows in place yet. So we have to leave space for them to make a lot of decisions about how this is gonna move forward. So just a few things um, that I wanted to add, thanks. Process. If you can yeah. ask them to raise their hands and then turn on their mic, then yeah. we can record the questions and we can hear each other. Yeah. There's a couple of questions coming through on the text. Um, Great. Great. Um, so yeah, we do have a couple questions on text, and um, I we don't have that many folks. So I'm going to try opening up the audio uh, to Jared first. Um, see, I think I know how to do this. Uh, there you are. Hi, Jared. Mute you. So you want Jared's question? Go ahead and, and share it with people on the audio. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Uh, my question is, I realize you're looking for a very diverse group that has different thinking and uh, different experiences. And I was wondering if you had a few key areas that um, you're looking for as far as expertise that you really want to fill or somebody that might be a hard fill. Good question. Um, we don't know what we don't know yet, but there's some obvious groupings and some that are going to be harder to fill. Um, I think we'll find researchers and advocates from nonprofits, um, environmental organizations. Uh, through our First Alaskans relationships, we're finding a lot of tribal elders and, and networks. Um, we, but we might find some who say, oh, I don't do that sort of thing. And it sounds difficult or like might take technology. We want people to realize this is a very human experience. And so while we're all sitting here on a Zoom webinar, that might not work for some folks who would be perfect for this. And we would be happy to talk to them by phone and really get to know them in person and find a way to make that work. Some sectors that we know we want and we need, and they might not know that they're right for this, would be folks that are um, looking at policy making, legislation, uh, um, regulatory agency folks, um, but also people with a development mindset. So there are folks um, who are trying to work in their industries to create economic opportunity and need to interact you know, well and mindfully and, and in communities where salmon is king. And so what about folks who might be on the development side uh, who bring a perspective that would be completely missing and we would maintain some opposing viewpoints. Re if we resource could. development. Resource yeah. development is what I mean. Yeah. Um, mining, oil and gas. Um, how, how can we continue to, even renewable energy um, projects, um, how do we continue to strengthen Alaska's economic infrastructure while protecting salmon? Um, things like the hospitality industries. Uh, so we, we do want to get those kinds of diverse voices in. Uh, but the common, one of the common denominators of fellow is they can both advocate effectively for and, and, and be an agent of, of, of wisdom to share from their perspective. And they're genuinely curious about the other perspectives. Mm -hmm. So if somebody um, is telling us, well, I already know everything. They might not be who we're looking for as a fellow. We want to help, we want to find folks that are genuinely interested in what they have not yet learned. Um, and I'm curious, Jared, if, if that answered your question and some of you guys on the chat, you might tell us other sectors we haven't even mentioned, yeah. um, national and federal, um, uh, points of view. So let's let um, let me go to another question. Um, and let me just add really really quick that um, uh, someone asked a couple of people asked this last night, and that's one of the reasons why we want to know your relationship with salmon because you may have a relationship um, to this kind of work that that we're not familiar with, and so it's important that um, that we are open to all all of those things uh, initially. Right. And um, Cheyenne, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you because she asked a question along this lines. Um, can you speak up, Cheyenne? She might be looking for her own mute button. She was asking, when you apply online, what does role mean? That's one of our questions. Mm -hmm. We offered a set of categories, um, I think eight or ten of them, policy, tribal, um, commercial fishing, subsistence, personal use, um, and a box. And it's really important that you don't just try to pick from a list of words we invented, but you describe it in language that uh, is meaningful for you. So um, that's, that's partly the answer. And there's no wrong answer if you're, <coughs> I, I do personal use fishing and my family has a, a set net commercial fishery and I belong to a tribe, great. So one of the things we said last night, which we haven't said yet, is that um, we really want you to um, contact us and ask questions, that this is not a process where you have to fill it all out without any help or interaction with us. We have a team of people here who can answer your questions and that you can email or call. So um, um, please don't feel like that you can't do that. We want you to do that. And I want to go to... Um, there was a question that we skipped. No, I'm going back to it. Um, M. Jabanovich. Uh, so I'm going to unmute you, and uh, if you want to share your question out loud, and tell us what your first name is, because we can't tell. Tell us 
Um, he says, sorry, my microphone doesn't work. Ah, so gotcha. Well, then we'll read it for you. Um, so uh, the first question um, he or she asked, are distinct goals and projects expected in the application? Uh, no. Um, no. We, this is part of the equation which really will emerge from the people who come together. Uh, in the application, there is a question. What would you change if you could change one thing in the salmon systems? That's to give us a sense of you know, where you see the system pressure points and how you might approach a, a difficult challenge. Uh, but that does not have to be the path it unfolds on. No. We're just trying to get a sense of, of, of your thought. Now, there will be people who already have some really some great ideas. And if there's, there's not a lot of room in there, so whatever you can share in there would be great. And just to reemphasize, the salmon people systems. So we're really looking at how we're gonna impact the salmon people systems. So. Okay. Um, and so another question from the same uh, person, are there any organizations in place to help assist with the outcomes of the fellowship? For example, mentorship groups, schools, publishers? Um, yes and yes. So our partners in, the, in the, the Salmon Connect Network are already on board to be supportive. Related to it, there's a group of people working on policy issues around salmon and really looking for policy solutions. We look forward to making connections with those folks. We, um, but through First Alaskans, we anticipate being part of and sharing in a series of racial equity dialogues that they're unfolding. Um, through the Nautilus partners, they have eight work groups, each working on different dimensions of salmon and people. Mm -hmm. um, the same underpinning, um, looking at management systems, looking at um, community sustainability factors and integrating reams and reams of information to create synthesized knowledge. These are partners with us now and we are looking at how we can link to them. But you ask a good point, what about mentorship groups, schools and publishers? We know that the fellows that we invite will have their own network of assets. They will have um, resources and, and connections that can enhance uh, the work of the fellows beyond what we already know about. So there's another question it looks like that came in on text. Um, the question is, we don't know. So the, uh, so the question is, how can you explain how the $10,000 stipend works for those of us who work for state and federal agencies? Uh, sort of. Um, we, we've discussed this with our advisory team. And um, first, we would hope that the fellow themselves might be able to accept it. But we've already had that situation occur, I think, with um, uh, the first Alaskan fellows that that might not be acceptable within the um, code of conduct and ethics for state employees um, or elected officials. So it may be that that stipend can be contributed. What they did before was allowed you to make a contribution to a nonprofit of your choice. Um, but we, uh, we, we have a team that's working on the nature of the grant agreements to allow for that to, um, to allow for that to still add value into the world. Um, uh, but not become a conflict for you as a, as a public employee. Yeah, the intention of, of it originally, and still is, is that it's an award for the individual to use as they wish to help them with costs that may, they may need during the, the, the fellowship or just to use on things that they, that they want to. Um, but if there are restrictions, certainly then we need to work around that. So. Yeah. And... Um, we could use some more questions. We've still got uh, time. Um, I'll offer a couple of answers that have come up in some of my conversations. And one relates a little bit <clears throat> to this point about being perhaps a state employee uh, or a federal employee um, or a local government em employee. Um, how does this work in relationship to your work? So we, uh, as you know, uh, there's four gatherings uh, at, at a minimum that's 17 days away and we took a balanced role of splitting those five day kind of long weekends over weekends on the assumption and we know it's not perfect for everyone but that many folks might be more of a Monday through Friday so the the total days involved can will come partly from your personal life and partly from your professional world if you have a sort of Monday through Friday job. And uh, so 
We didn't want it all to be Monday through Friday or all weekends. It's a bit of a blend. But yes, you might need to take vacation time or leave time from an employer in order to attend those. Um, another clarity about those gatherings. Um, I talked to someone who's uh, way up north of Ruby, I think. And they said, you know, plane only comes, or maybe it was Petersburg. Plane only comes to Petersburg twice a week. Um, wasn't Petersburg, they didn't date the flight. Anyway, um, there aren't that many flights. There aren't that many time of day choices on flights. Uh, do I have to travel for two days before I'm there for five days and then travel another two days? So for some folks, it might really be a longer time away. Our hope and intention is that most people will be able to travel more or less within the five, five and a half days so that we have a solid four days together. But we have a lot we want to do as a cohort, so we'll work with each individual fellow on their logistics um, to hopefully uh, keep that within the time that we've already committed to. Um, and it should say on the website that there is the travel and all of the lodging and everything is covered as part of the fellowship. Is there another question? Examples of past projects that have been funded, and there's a question about um, question about the projects. Okay, so um, past projects have been funded is sort of, um, no, there are no examples specifically because this is the no. very first year. Yeah, and I college. would just say that, that um, you know, the reason why we're the lead agency is because we, um, because it, it fits within the kind of work that we really want, want, want to do. And, and so, but this is a very unique um, pro project and even the funder, the more, more Foundation, a lot of their funding has been focused on um, solving salmon challenges um, and and so this is a different approach as we look at at beginning to take on people challenges and that's why we're involved in it because that's the kind of work that we really really do um, I, I would just add that um, um, I was just reflecting on the, the, the conversation last night um, it's not a class this is, um, if you've not been involved in any of the kinds of work that we, we, we do, um, it's not sitting down and, um, and just receiving in, in, in information. There will be readings, there will be lots of things that you learn throughout this entire experience, but it really is experiential. It really is um, bringing yourself to it and, um, and, and, and building in that, in that way. Um, the other thing that I would add is that, that you know, there are some underlying assumptions here um, that, that our current salmon people systems isn't working as effectively as it could be. Um, and so there, is some, there are some um, real challenges that we face and that there's some underlying assumptions there. And there's also some underlying assumptions around it being um, equitable, that, um, that within all of these, these processes and systems we have is that there isn't the level of involvement and voice and access um, that there that there probably should be. So that that may help as you're thinking through um, um, your application process. Great, um, Jennifer. I just saw you typed a question here. I'm going to try to um, Jennifer Crow. She asked a question. So Jennifer, I'm going to unmute you and let you try sharing your question out loud. There you go. So test your audio, Jennifer. Oh, hello. Hi there. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I actually have a question. I was just entered uh, yet. I'm just soaking so much of this in. Um, I was just getting ready to introduce myself and um, share a little bit about uh, my connection to this uh, this project. Oh, gotcha. This is your introduction. Um, <laughs> yeah. Thank well, you. thank you um, for chiming in from Homer. We do hope to be in Homer in May. Um, so while we're, while um, I wanted to offer another response to a question that came up in the last two conversations I've had. And it's, so how much time is this really going to take? Um, that is part, there is, a, there is a minimum foundation of being at the gatherings, being prepared for them with a certain amount of pre-work, connecting uh, virtually to fellows between gatherings, um, and then obviously working towards these initiatives. Uh, but at that point, it becomes highly variable uh, because the initiatives can be a small thing that's quite experimental and you're just testing it out, or it could be, it could be the front end of a long-term shift. Um, and 
takes a tremendous amount of energy and it's deeply aligned with what you're already doing and want to do. So um, we know that there is, um, like many things that are learning related, you get out of it what you put into it. As an investment on behalf of the forum and our partners and the Moore Foundation, we really will be looking for fellows who want to make the most of this opportunity. It's rare and unique. Um, we have done our homework and have not found another place on the planet where they're really investing not only in the people, but the people as a system in order to shift something as big and complex as salmon people systems. So we, we, we look to find fellows who will work hard with us to learn as we go and have an impact. So um, there's yeah. a baseline and then there's a, yeah. you know. Yeah. And one other point, I'm just remembering all of these things. The, um, so the projects, which we got uh, several questions um, last night on, um, and, and we can share more information on, on those that um, they, they are intended to be collaborative. And so there is, um, there are not a lot of uh, boundaries or, or restrictions on those, but uh, we do want them to be collaborative. We do want more than one person to be engaged in those, those, those projects. So there will be an opportunity for you to work with, with others to, to come up with the, the projects. There is, and as, as Kitty mentioned, there's also funding for those, for those projects. So once, once the project is, is developed and thought through, there's opportunities to, uh, to put funding towards those as well. Right. So Jennifer Crow does have a question now. I'm going to unmute you again because we know that works. So let's hear from you, Jennifer. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Actually, I was finishing my, my, my comment, um, um, but I, I, I'm sort of overwhelmed. I'm just absorbing so much of this. So thank you. Um, okay. I thought, well, I thought I read it into as a question, but let me re respond to it. So Jennifer shared that she's working on a book about sustainability from the inside out, um, really shifting from to, to, from scarcity mindset to abundance. And I have to say that's really intriguing to us. We are the Humanities Forum. Um, we really do believe in stories and in in um, how the words. Uh, can affect the people and the people affect the society. So uh, if people think this is for scientists only or, or um, just policymakers, we really do want artists and, and uh, people um, perhaps like yourself. Um, another question that came in on text is, uh, will there be grant money available as part of the pro program to fund proposed projects? And if so, how much? And what's the time frame? for receiving them and reporting on the project. So let me try to touch on this, building on what has been said. Um, as a fellow, you'll get a $10,000 award. That's yours. Whoever you want to use it is all up to you. As a fellow, um, we'll start out with maybe some small little tiny micro grants to promote your exploration and your curiosity journeys, as we call them. But then by the time we get to October session, uh, the October gathering of this year, the fellows will have spent time together talking and thinking about what could be done together that can't be done alone, such that they're proposed and then um, reproposed and adjusted to take advantage of the diversity of the fellows. By the time that second gathering in October is done, we should have a pretty clear idea of how we'll spend the first $50,000 as a cohort. So it's not a huge sum of money, but it's not insignificant. And that might be for six little projects, two big projects. It really depends on what emerges. But we're anticipating $50,000 awarded in um, October. And, and essentially, you have at least a year to do that work. Um, the February stakeholder event uh, here in Anchorage will be a chance to engage more people, advance your project. It doesn't have to be done, but it probably should be in the works by then, so you really can have something accomplished in about a year. Um, but the beauty of this is also that the, um, the projects might fuel future projects. I kind of always do this sort of swimming movement. The, uh, there is a second group of fellows coming along just as this one is in its last six months, so your projects and initiatives may be great starting points for future fellows. Um, so that's uh, what we know. There probably also will be, and we're going to be checking with our funder and our balances, but maybe halfway through the year of working on the initiatives that were funded with the first $50,000, we're going to work with the fellows to evaluate what's really working. And um, we have some resources we can reinvest in the projects that are having real tangible impact. Um, so hopefully that 
uh, helps. There's a question Madeline uh, asked about, uh, do we picture some of these projects leading into future academic work for prospective fellows? Um, I would say future work. It doesn't have to be academic work. Um, it, could, it, could be. It, it could be academic, but definitely this, uh, um, we do not want this to end after two rounds of fellows. We at the forum have um, our Leadership Anchorage program, Cameron mentioned, 20 years of history with that program, and a strong alumni network. And the alumni continue to learn with and from the network. So we anticipate cultivating the, the alumni of the fellows, sort of your fellow for life, and um, finding ways to stay connected after the real immersive, deep, deep experiences over 18 months. So, um, are there other questions on today's call? I don't want to leave any hanging, but um, we'll just reinforce when the applications are due. Right. So yeah. the applications are due February twenty eighth. Um, that the the system's open till midnight, and as we mentioned, you can um, start your application, draft, save it, save it several times. Um, it's not hard. It's about four little essay questions, and that's not a I long didn't essay. Say it's not hard. Okay, it's we not expect thoughtful answers. It's to the not questions. complicated. So be intentional with your answers. Yeah, we do. The, the the questions. Some of them are quite vague. I think one of them is, "How is a conversation about salmon like a com about pertaining to a conversation about Alaska?" We do want your thoughtful answers, um, uh, but it's 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 not a thesis. So, and you can attach any kind of reference resources you need. Every applicant needs to give us at least one email address of someone that can submit a referral for them. Um, Before you go on, the, um, so the uh, just uh, clarification that um, fill out the application. If you need help filling out the application, contact us and let us know. We can answer questions and help. Um, once that's submitted, there will be another process, and um, and candidates before they are. Um, um, accepted will go through an interview and so there will be an interview stage as well um, um, and the advisory council that we are using will be involved in those and so we'll have a number of stakeholders in, involved in that in that decision making process right so one more text question what can be funded with the grant money salary travel or equipment etc do we have restrictions yeah i mean at this at this 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 point it's open you know um here at the forum we um we have a grants process that we do already um and we uh fund all of those things as part of our grants pro pro process right. so there's there's um the only restrictions on it are are, are going to be anything that's you know lobbying or or political activity those kinds of things um, I think religious, so, affiliation. religious affiliation. So those are put on us by both our federal and our funding right. sources. But but it really is um, it really is very open, and so it creates space for the teams to be really creative and think about what kinds of projects mm -hmm. they want to do. We haven't been asked this yet, but uh, do they require a match? And the answer is not per se, no. although that certainly demonstrates leverage, and we're trying to have influence. Um, so. Um, uh, Madeline, another question. Curious if there are any limits to the use of the work after the fellowship ends. Not really. We we will have a, an upfront agreement signed with the fellows around being able to share your stories in the media, share your picture. Um, uh, but we will include in that sort of if there's intellectual property involved in that, we will try to make that really clear. Our goal is in fact to empower the fellows and for this work to transcend the boundaries of the program. So we won't want to keep you from being able to continue the work beyond it uh, in any way. It's around indigenous knowledge and things like that and you would help the fellows shape that aspect of it in terms of moving stuff moving forward is what I would say. Yeah, yeah. Well, we will um, definitely, uh, and, and we haven't, wrap this up questions um, um, we, we might be able to get out of here um, in a couple minutes and keep the recording a little shorter um, we continue to remain open to your questions we'll sit down and have coffee or talk over phone uh, please call us here at Forum and um, connect with us if you have any further questions um, our approach as we've tried to say is this balance of salmon and people and it's also a balance of well-defined aspects and what emerges with our fellows. We view this uh, process as being dynamic 
and um, it will take uh, dynamic individuals to be part of it who want to uh, be in on this experiment. Um, but it's not an unfounded, ungrounded experiment. We are gathering insights from not only our 20, 40 years of work here in Alaska, but some terrific partners uh, um, who are doing some interesting work. So, And Jennifer, your, your question, just to make sure you got an answer to it. Um, yes, I would agree with you that if, if projects involve gathering information from people from, from different areas of Alaska, and, and that was an important part of developing that, that, that project, and that would obviously be part of the of funding for it. Um, and so that's what's really exciting is, is that the, the fellows program as a whole covers all of your tra travel expenses and food and lodging when you're in your convenings, um, but the, the grants really do provide some funding to help, um, help make those, those pro projects become real. And um, one more thing, um, maybe not the last thing, but the, um, we have a, 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 not unlimited, but we have, a, we have an intentional block of budget set aside for communications. So it's capturing your stories and sharing and working with the people who are part of this. We won't do that in isolation. We will do that in consultation with the fellows all the way along. Um, David, Devin asked a question, can there be international collaboration? And I love this. I did get a question through email about um, international perspectives. Um, this, is, this is about salmon in Alaska, but like we said with air versus water versus salmon versus even you know, Arctic char, everything's connected. So um, we wouldn't exclude the potential for some of those initiatives to be international in nature. Um, it may prove to be one of the high leverage points. Um, we, we are putting a lot of boundaries on it at this stage um, to answer that question one more time. Um, Cheyenne asked the question on chat, then where will the stories live? Will you be airing them? Certainly we plan to have the stories available on the internet. Um, we'll capture, maybe you've seen some of the salmon life stories. Um, we'll do something like that. We publish a magazine, the forum magazine, and there may be print versions of the stories. Um, we, we want them to fuel and inspire future leaders uh, to continue the good work. So the, the, the boundaries are limitless. We, we but create, it's not. That's right. <laughs> so what's, that's, but we, we create films, you know, we create, uh, we help people to publish books. Um, there, we have strong partnerships with with um, public radio and television stations, and and we all do kinds of art so. installations. We might find that a fellow is an artist and wants to have a Second Friday art installation or something that tours museums around Alaska. Um, we're 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 quite excited about what's possible there. Great. So, um, last call on uh, questions. Um, and uh, of course, this isn't the limit. You can join our mailing list uh, on the uh, web. You can contact us directly here at the forum. Um, and uh, I just want to say thanks again for your time um, joining us on the webinar today, uh, your questions and your interest. Uh, hopefully, all of you are interested in the Fellows Program, and maybe you also know a few people who would be perfect for it. On our website, you can nominate. And that's very simple. Just go in there, give us a name and an email, a little sentence or so about why you think they're, they would be a great candidate, and then we'll take the lead and contact them. So, but the sooner the better, because we have three weeks. Three weeks to find these uh, incredible fellows and um, begin the journey together. So we want to sign off, uh, say thank you again for taking time to listen, and um, we look forward to meeting some of you in person. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.